Hello everyone, my name is Monica Takwar and this is my colleague Aditi Subramanian from Doherty Valley High School. We are data analysts and today we'll be presenting an analysis of New York City's air quality based on data of pollutants in the region. We will be covering four key sections, an introduction of the problem, an in-depth analysis of the data, recommendations for air quality improvement for the Healthy Air for All nonprofit, and lastly a conclusion to end off our presentation. Air pollution is one of the most pressing environmental and public health challenges affecting urban populations. According to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, exposure to harmful pollutants has been linked to respiratory diseases, cardiovascular conditions, and increased mortality rates. In 2023, unusual wildfires in Canada released vast amount of PM2.5 and other hazardous pollutants into the atmosphere, causing widespread air quality deterioration across the northeastern United States. This extreme pollution event led to record-breaking AQI levels, putting millions of residents at risk, particularly vulnerable populations such as children, elderly, and chronically ill patients. However, wildfire smoke is just one contributing factor. New York City already faces chronic air pollution challenges due to high vehicular emissions, industrial pollutants, and the heat island effect caused by dense urban infrastructure. The objective of our analysis is to examine key pollution trends in New York City, identify the most affected boroughs, and provide data-driven recommendations to improve air quality. Let's begin by analyzing the specific pollutants that pose the greatest threat to air quality in New York City and their broader implications. Upon an initial examination of the AQI data, we were able to identify the most prominent pollutants with the most significant effect. As seen in this pie chart, these pollutants are NO2, O3, SO2, and the fine particles PM2.5. So let's take a closer look at the trends for these particles in New York City. Starting off with ozone. This graph shows a steady decline in ozone levels from 2005 to 2022, signaling an overall reduction in ozone pollution. Contributing factors include stricter EPA regulations on industrial emissions, improved vehicle standards, and New York City's shift towards cleaner energy. However, ozone formation is also influenced by climate conditions, meaning extreme heat events such as wildfires could still lead to temporary spikes. From 2008 to 2015, sulfur dioxide levels dropped significantly across all boroughs, with Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx initially having the highest concentrations. This decline is largely due to the New York City Clean Heat Program, which phased out high pollution heating oils. Additionally, the federal 2010 SO2 National Air Quality Standard pushed industries to adopt cleaner fuel alternatives. Now, for NO2 levels, we see that the highest is in Manhattan and the Bronx. They have steadily declined since 2008, reflecting improved air quality citywide. New York City's efforts in sustainable transportation, including congestion pricing, bike lanes, and electric buses, have helped reduce vehicle emissions and thus NO2. However, delays in congestion pricing in older vehicles in some areas have led to uneven progress across boroughs. Taking a look at arguably the most relevant to this case, PM2.5 levels have fallen significantly since 2005, with the Bronx initially experiencing the highest concentrations. New York City's clean heat program was a major factor, but PM2.5 is also strongly linked to wildfire smoke, making it an ongoing challenge. The 2023 Canadian wildfires caused record-breaking air pollution in New York City, highlighting the need for better emergency response strategies. Moving on to respiratory health trends, hospital admissions for respiratory issues have decreased since 2008, though rates remain high in the Bronx and Staten Island. Reduced NO2 and PM2.5 levels have played a role, but socioeconomic and geographic disparities persist. The Bronx, historically exposed to higher pollution levels, still sees disproportionately high asthma rates. A study from Columbia University linked NO2 reductions to fewer asthma-related ER visits, reinforcing the connection between air quality and public health. Considering all aspects of our analysis and past research, we've come up with some recommendations for healthy, clean air for all to work towards improving the air quality. Our recommendation entails a four-part plan that focuses on infrastructure regulation, public health, and community awareness. Infrastructure and transportation. Urban greenery, like rooftop gardens, can filter pollutants such as PM2.5, accelerating the MTA's transition to electric buses, as noted in their 2023 sustainability report, would further cut vehicle emissions. High-efficiency air filtration in public buildings is essential. The New York City Mayor's Office found indoor filtration help during peak wildfire pollution. Expanding real-time air quality monitoring, as highlighted in the 2023 New York Times report, would improve localized response efforts. Regulatory and policy measures. New York City's clean heat program reduced SO2 pollution, and a similar approach could target wildfire-related emissions. 
Enforcing temporary restrictions on high emission activities during extreme pollution events and implementing congestion pricing, as recommended by the Environmental Defense Fund, could further reduce vehicle pollution. Public health and emergency response. Providing N95 masks in high-risk areas and establishing clean air shelters with enhanced filtration, as advised by New York City's Department of Health, can help protect vulnerable communities. The American Lung Association warns that prolonged PM2.5 exposure increases respiratory risks. Strengthening hospital preparedness and integrating wildfire smoke forecasts into early warning systems can help mitigate health problems. Community engagement and awareness. Public education is vital. The New York City Environmental Protection Agency advocates for social media campaigns, transit ads, and school programs to raise awareness about minimizing pollution exposure. Low-income communities face higher pollution risks. Partnering with local organizations in these low-income high-risk areas can allow distribution of air purifiers and educational resources. Workplaces and schools should incorporate air quality protocols into safety plans. By implementing these strategies with support from city agencies, environmental groups, and researchers, New York City can better prepare for the future wildfire-related pollution and safeguard public health. The 2023 wildfire exposed New York City's vulnerability to extreme air pollution, making it clear that proactive measures are essential. With our proposed solutions, stronger infrastructure, stricter regulations, better health protections, and community initiatives, New York City can build resilience and ensure cleaner air for the future. Thank you for listening.